Sears chili? I don't need that. Hold on here. Oh, well, thank you very much. I want to thank everyone for giving me and my family an experience this evening that I will treasure for the rest of my life. Growing up in Boston, Massachusetts, I didn't imagine one day hearing the words Hall of Fame associated with my name, unless that had something to do with penalty minutes or eating, stuff like that, you know. I know, hey, it happens, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I've always had a big butt and a big, I was a big guy all the time, so. <laughs> now here I am with the greatest names in the United States hockey history. It's truly an honor, and especially going in with an induction class that represents American excellence and class in every aspect of our game. Ed Snyder, who represents American determination and commitment. Doc Emmerich, who represents American joy and passion. Gary Suda, who represents American trust and reliability. Chris Chelios, who represents American spirit and leadership. To the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame, I thank you. And gentlemen, it is a privilege to share this opportunity with you and this evening with you. I grew up in a household that, li that lived and celebrated American values, and a particular important value of service. My dad, John, was a Boston fireman. You cannot get more American than that. Like a lot of good Americans, his calling in life was service to his community. My mom, Geraldine, had to deal with her family, me and my three other siblings. That was a lot of work. Even with the last name, Kachuk, we were an all-American family. And more thing about, one thing about the Kachuks, we loved hockey. I was seven years old when I experienced the miracle on ice. Even at that age, I understood the impact that resulted in our nation. I clearly was moved by that team, especially the boys from Massachusetts, Jack O'Callaghan, Dave Silt, Jim Craig, and of course, Mike Ruzioni. That experience fueled my love for hockey, more specifically, U.S. hockey. My U.S. teammates on the 1996 World Cup team were also moved by their own childhood memories of the 19, 1980 Miracle on Ice. To name a few, Brett Hall, Brian Leach, Mike Richter, Billy Guerin, Mike Medano, Doug Waite, John LeClaire, Tony Amonte, and of course, my friends over here. We followed the example of the 19, 1980 team I'd like to think our victory in 1996 had the same effect on today's stars made and developed here in the USA. Guys like Ryan Souter, Ryan Kessler, David Backus, Patrick Game, to name a few. I do know this, today the United States produces players, men and women, who have talent, will, and character that matches or exceeds players from anywhere in the world, and that would include our friends to the north who learned in the World Cup the United States is indeed a hockey nation. Our 1996 team was assembled by Hall of Famer, our GM, and my friend Lou Lamorello. We were coached by Ron Wilson, who gave us a system but also made us believe. And I noticed the other assistant coach was there, Paul Holmgren. You know, he was a, speaking of tough, holy cow, was he tough. He almost cut my season short by cutting me with a skate when we were screwing around fighting before practice. But thank God, in any true American fashion, we were united. We ate together, trained together, and you could say we socialized a lot together. And we stood up to Canada. We outfought them, outscored them, outhustled them. Winning the World Cup in Montreal was a signature moment in my career. But more important, it was a milestone accomplishment for hockey in the U.S. I'll always give Canada its due, but today they're not crazy about having to play the United States, whether it's World Cup, World Juniors, World Championships. Whew. I am so proud to have been part of the 1996 team and of course the 2002 Salt Lake team that won the silver medal to compete 
for international hockey's greatest honor on American soil was a lifetime moving experience, especially given that many of my teammates in the 96 were there with me in 2002. This just generation of US players helped elevate our program to where it is today in a world-class power. And for that, I thank Lou, I thank Ron, Paul, I thank my teammates, and I ask you to join with me to remember in two people, Herb Brooks, who showed us American will, and John Cunniff, who epitomized American strength. For those who know John Cunniff, what he went through in that Olympics, if you know Gary and Chris remember, you know, he was fighting, battling cancer, and he fought, he fought, and I remember looking at him sometimes, and you just couldn't imagine what this man is going through, and he would never show it. And for us players, there is no way we would even walk around limping or complaining about everything. He was a great man and the toughest guy I've ever met. I am fortunate to have a long career in the National Hockey League and always took pride in being identified as a U.S.-born player. So it may have been ironic to be drafted by, in 1990, by the Winnipeg Jets. But I found Winnipeg to be a city that embodied everything I love about the United States. Winnipeg people are honest, they work hard, and they care about their neighbors. It's where I met my wife and also got to meet my good friend, Eddie Olchuk, who taught me a lot of great things, both on and off the ice. The Jets moved to Phoenix in 96, and as the captain of the Coyotes, myself and Ronick had the opportunity to play a leadership role into introducing hockey to an area in the United States that didn't know what it was missing. It was a very American experience. It made me a more complete person. I was traded to St. Louis in March of 2001. St. Louis is the heartland of America, a heck of a hockey town, and that is where today I make my home. I couldn't be happier. And I also want to point out some friends from St. Louis that are here in the St. Louis organization, John Davidson, Al McInnes, and of course, Ray Borelli, who's worked with USA Hockey before. Barrett Jackman, a player. I'm flattered you guys came here for this night. I appreciate it. So, and for all the wonderful memories of I, I have wearing the blue note, I'll always be proud to have been acquired by one of the finest hockey, U.S. hockey men in the game, Larry Plo. Larry made me part. Larry made me part of the 2002 U.S. team that won the silver medal in the, in the Olympics. He trusted me for the St. Louis Blues. To Larry and his wife, Wendy, thank you very much. Larry also gave me a chance to help Atlanta make the playoffs, making a deal with another great U.S. hockey man and Don Waddell. Larry and Don are two examples of the American influence in my life and my career. My coach at Boston University, the legendary Jack Parker is another. And they all have something in common that I think is important. They're all great hockey men. But above all, they were committed to serving the game of hockey in the US. I am now retired from the game, and that provides me the opportunity to live the life to its fullest with my family. To my wife, Chantel, my sons, Matthew and Brady, and to my daughter, Taryn, there's no way to put in words the effect you've had on me during my career and everyday life. Thanks so much for being with me tonight. To my mom and dad for those long hours every morning working three or four jobs just so your son can play hockey. I'm very thankful for that. To my in-laws, Don and Pat, you made me the luckiest guy in the world. And to my agent, Bob Murray, and his wife, Lynn. Bob, thanks for making sure I'm always at the right place at the right time. Retirement means it's now time to serve. I coach my sons, and in fact, I spend about four or five hours a day on that new thing they call a coaching module. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Is it bad when you feel? Sorry, I'm sweating right now. It's what fat people do. Um, but it's pretty sad when you feel those tests and you've, you know, I figured I was getting inducted into this. I might be able to you know, have them give me a pass, but that didn't work out too well. So I'm not done yet. I got till December 31st, but if somebody wants to help me out, I'd be very grateful. <laughs> but, but I take service seriously. 
and as a player, I always felt in a small way I was playing a service to my country. Let me be clear, I'm not comparing to wearing the U.S. sweater in a hockey game to those who truly serve our nation, soldiers, policemen, firemen, people like my dad, a Marine who served in Vietnam. Patriotism to these folks is more than an American flag. It is who they are. And yet I hope they still can appreciate the sense of responsibility, honor, pride that I honestly felt each time I put on the sweater. <sighs> Sorry, it's really hot. <laughs> and now that my playing days have ended, let me tell you, there is no greater tribute to be honored by the United States Hockey Hall of Fame. To share the moment with my family and closest friends and to be remembered as, a, as an American hockey player. Thank you very much.